Okay, we need to have a think about this um, idea of rea reaction order here. Okay, so if you think about this reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid, uh, which uh, I think we talked about in the previous video, it should be fairly familiar to you that, that reaction. Uh, we all know that if you increase the concentration of the HCl, uh, the, so if you increase the conch of that, the rate, or I should say the initial rate, yeah, because it always is going to drop off after the first bit as the, the initial rate will go up. But we don't know how it go up. Because, you know, if we double the concentration, does the initial rate double? Or does it change by, does it go by a factor of four or, or what? Well, anyway, we can find out that one of three things usually happens. Right? For, some, for some reactions, when you when you double the rate, we so you, you double the concentration of the reactant. Sorry, so if you double the concentration, uh, then the rate doubles. That's a possibility. Another possibility is when you double the concentration of reactant, the rate quadruples. And in certain rare reactions, there sometimes when you double the concentration, change the concentration of the reactant, the rate remains unchanged. So you can imagine with this one as well, um, right? This one here, if you if you if you triple the rate, then the the, the rate sorry, if you triple the concentration, then the rate would go up by a factor of nine. So just express this mathematically. What we're going to say here is rate for this one, rate is proportional to the concentration of R, directly proportional. This one here, rate, I hope you can see, is proportional to the concentration of R squared. And I'm going to put a little one in there. So I could put one here. Okay, so this this is a this is number one. This is number two. You do get some rate. Actually, we don't need to know any examples of these. But uh, sometimes when you double the the concentration of the reactant, the rate goes up by a uh, factor of eight. So in that case, rate would be equal to rate would be proportional to r to the power of three. Now this one here, we we can say here that rate is proportional to r to the power of zero. Well, anything to the power of zero uh, is equal to one. So in other words, <coughs> uh, we're just saying there that it's independent of rate. And the, and the jargon here is what we'd say is, we'd say that this reaction is first order with respect to yeah, RWT, that's why I would say that was zero order with respect to, sorry. So that was zero order with respect to R. We say that this one was first order with respect to R. This one is second order and so on. <coughs> Right, so how do you find out uh, if a reaction is first order, second order, or zero order? Well, the only way to find this out is by doing experiments. You must do experiments. You can't tell by looking at the equation. So let's have a look at some experimental data that someone has done. Uh, and this, so if I, Put a table of results down here. Okay. Um, right, so what we're doing is we're looking at this reaction here, the reaction between uh, nitrogen, uh, nitrogen oxide and hydrogen to form nitrogen and water. Okay, so some, someone has done six experiments here. We've done different experiments and they've changed the concentrations of the nitrous earth and nitrogen oxide and they change the concentration of the hydrogens and they've looked at the effect that has on the rate of the reaction here uh, which is 
initial the initial rate to be more uh, exact because of course when you change uh, as soon as the reaction starts going the rate's going to change and just note that the the units of rate of reaction are mole per decimeter cube per second uh, that's the correct units for rates right let's see what happens so it's a bit like when you you're doing how science works or whatever you should only change one thing shouldn't you? you should change one variable and keep the other thing the same so what we're going to do is we're going to keep in experiments one to three let's have a look at these we're keeping the concentration of NO the same. And the only thing we're changing is the concentration of the H, um, uh, H2. And so uh, that's what's gonna affect the rate of reaction. Let's look between one and two. As we go between one and two, what do we do there? Uh, one and two, we double H2 concentration. And what does that do? Well, that, doubles uh, the rate of reaction. So we conclude from that that the reaction is first order with respect to it's first order with respect to hydrogen. And then we can just uh, just to verify that we could like say look between one and three right you triple the concentration of H2 there. What's happened to the rate? It's gone up to three times 10 to the minus 3 to 9 times 10 to the minus 3, so that's triple, so that's all, that's all good. Now we need to have a, we've looked at uh, the effect of hydrogen there. Let's have a look what happens when we change the concentration of the NO. Right, so which experiments are we going to be looking at there? Well, we're going to be looking at experiments 4 to 6. And 4 to 6, we can get the hydrogen the concentration the same. <clears throat> the only thing that's changed is the NO concentration. Let's look and see what happens between um, between uh, one and uh, four and five. Then, okay. So four and five. What have we done? We have doubled the concentration of NO. And what ha is happening to the rate of reaction there? Well, it's gone up from 0.5 to two, so it hasn't gone up by a factor of two. It's gone up by a factor of four. So the rate uh, goes up by a factor of four. So that means this reaction is second order with respect to NO. Uh, and we can check that. Should we look at experiments four to six? Let's have a look at that. So we do four to six. Four to six, you've tripled the concentration of NO and what's happened to that it's gone from 0.5 to 4.5 that's gone up by a factor of 9 3 squared so that confirms yet yeah, it is second order with respect to um, <clears throat> NO and what we can do then is we can combine these two uh, bits of information to give us something called the rate equation okay so the rate equation we know we're combining two things. We know that rate is proportional to H2 to the power of one. So I'll put the one in there to remind us of. And we also know that rate is proportional uh, to the concentration of NO to the power of two. Right, you can always replace a proportional sign with an equals and a constant. So if we do that and combine the two together, we get rate is equal to a constant, normally do a funny little k like that, uh, so you don't confuse it with a big k for equilibrium constant. H2 to the power of one, the one is optional, but I'll put it in. NO to there. So that is the rate equation for this reaction. That's what this is. And the only way of finding out the rate equation is by doing experiments. That's the rate equation, and this little constant here, this is called the rate constant. And we can talk about that more <coughs> later on, but it's only a constant, uh, you must keep the temperature the same. Because if you increase the temperature, that's going to get bigger 
because the rate of reaction is going to increase. Right, just to do one more of those rate order things, and that, that was a very easy example. And that was a, that's a sensible experiment where they've only changed one thing at a time. Well, quite often what they seem to do, because that's a bit too easy, they do, they do in the exam questions, they give you where uh, you wouldn't actually do the, there's one down here, you wouldn't actually do it if you were, they changed two things at once, but that's just to make it harder for us to work out what's going on. Right, we've got this reaction here, and, um, and once again, they are a bit naughty because they don't use proper chemical reactions. They just say, they just say, oh, the reaction is A plus B going to C. Okay, so that's what we've got here, A plus B going to C. And we've got to find out the orders with respect to A and with respect to B. Let's do that then. All right, now let's look at experiments one to two. All right, when we're doing one to two, right, this is fairly good because what have they done there? They've kept B the same. So B is not going to affect the initial rate. But what have they done from one to two? We said the concentration of A, that has gone up by three, hasn't it? 0.12 times three is 0.36. And what's happened to the rate there? Well, 2.1 times three, is, that has actually gone up by a factor of nine. Okay, it hasn't gone up by a factor of three. Just check that. Yeah, it's gone up by a factor of nine. So that tells us then, uh, that this must be second order with respect to A. And now what, uh, now we have they, they make life difficult for us because um they haven't done an experiment you haven't done two experiments where they keep um a constant and only change b which would be the sensible thing to do but they haven't done that so what have they done let's should we look at experiment um let's go from two to three shall we okay okay so from two to three what have we done to the concentration of, of A? So A has gone up by a factor of two. What would that, uh, that alone, what would that do to the rate? This will increase rate by two squared, by four. Okay. And let's see what has happened, what has actually happened to the rate though. Well, the rate there hasn't gone up by a factor of four, the rate has gone up by a factor of two. So i write that down, but the rate only goes by a factor of two. So that means, so therefore, whatever we have done to A, sorry, we have done to the concentration of B, is halving the rate. So what have we done to the concentration of B? We've halved the concentration of B, haven't we? Let's write that in a different way. So I'll write down that B has gone up by a factor of a half, if you like, that's the same as halving, if it's halved. Uh, so that and the rate, this has halved the rate, has, has made the rate change by a factor of half. So therefore it's first order with respect to B. So uh, that is a little bit tricky, but they, that, that's a fairly common thing to do is just not to do a very logical experiment, but to change two things at once just for the purpose of making the question harder. Uh, and if you if you did that, what would the rate equation for this be? The rate equation would be rate is equal to the rate constant um, multiplied by the second order with respect to a, so a squared and b to the power of one. By the way, so these are the orders with respect to. Okay, so these are order with respect to.
what's the overall order? The overall order, what you do is you add these numbers up together. So the overall order is three, it's third order. Uh, and the previous example, the overall order was third order as well, because one was the power of two, one was the power of one. So the overall order, you add those numbers up together. Let's leave that there.